Well, today I want to take you through some simple steps that aren't necessarily that obvious on how you can get the handheld FT65 on the air quickly. So this is my very first radio and when I was working on getting my technician's license uh, this is what I was practicing with and I really had no idea how the whole ham thing worked so I got it and I was presented with this VFO uh, mode screen with just a random frequency I don't particularly remember now which one it started with by default but nothing was being heard when I turned it on after I had charged it and I really had no idea where to start um, yeah, but of course as the classes went along I quickly made progress on the frequencies that this particular radio will uh, address the VHF UHF frequencies of course you can hear some radio on here too kind of comically the very first thing I heard on this really was just letting the radio go in to scan the entire frequency it can address and I started hearing radio. Uh, I turned thinking I was hearing a real ham conversation only to realize it was broadcast. So when I went to class, we were going to use one of the um, club members call signs to call to their repeater and I could not get this radio to hit it. So there's a few things on here that I think would be useful for people to know and we'll walk you through them. Uh, first thing you got to know, of course, is how you turn it on. And this knob up top here is a multifunction volume plus turn on. Uh, for me, it was a little bit unintuitive, but turning to the left, we'll turn it off. And you hear a little click there when it turns. You can see the uh, volume indicator there, the white line on that knob. And you click it back on, you go through the boot sequence, and we're right back at start point. Uh, on the side here, you have a little rubber flap here that will allow you to plug in a uh, microphone and headset. On the back, you get this nice uh, belt clip, and you can see the uh, charging interface right there, so it comes with a dock. This piece um, is separate in the box when it comes, so you just have to thread it on with the included screws. You can see them there at the top. And of course the, uh, the antenna, this is the stock antenna, comes separate and you just thread that on, nice and easy. And it is a SMA standard, so when you go to order something that is a little bit better, that's the interface that you have to look for. And then at the top, you also see the orange button there. Um, that's kind of a tactical feature. You can trigger the screen on and it turns on a little flashlight. Um, I kind of frequently do that because I don't really want to necessarily start or interrupt a search, but if you click that on and off, you will get a, the screen to light up so you can see what you're doing in the dark. And of course, uh, this is more of the business side of the radio. At the very top here, we have our push a talk button. And below that we have a squelch release. And then below that you have the function key. Um, and we'll start here with just holding down the function key. So that will kind of get you started on everything. If you hold that down, you get into the menu. And you can scroll through the various settings that you will want to modify. And if you tap the push to talk, that would drop you back to the frequency screen. All right, so first thing you need to do is find a frequency that you may wish to listen to. I'm gonna program in a local repeater here. You can do that by just using the keypad here, one, four, five, four, five, zero. This radio will auto do the a repeater shift Unless you program it to do differently, it will do the either negative or positive, depending on UHF, VHF. So once you've done that, then you may wish to put it in memory so that you can quickly drop to the various uh, repeaters or frequencies that you might want to listen to. Yes, he likes this star V slash M right there. So we hold that down. And it presents you with this uh, screen in the memory bank, you can see it blinking up there where it'll go. And then you, just like the old flip phone style, you just hit the button 
uh, with, that has the letters that you want to use. And here's where I ran into my first problem. Okay, I've got the letter I want, but how do I get to the next um, letter space? Um, you got to hit that function key down there and you can advance. And that's really where operating a radio like this for me was difficult because a lot of these buttons have multiple functions, but it's not obvious which one it is and what's, what it's going to do when you push it. So we'll just keep moving along here. And I'm just going to make mine. Remember here, uh, demo just for the sake of this video. And there's the word. And so let's say we want to enter that into that memory bank. Just hold this uh, memory button in. You see it gives you the indication that it's actually happened and it's in memory. I am not gonna use that particular memory, so let's just see what happens if you want to get rid of it. Um, I've already set this up, so you can see here um, item number 18 there. Hopefully we can still see that in the light. Yeah, it says memory delete. You go in there and you're presented with the memories that we have in a list there. And of course you can see my uh, demo memory at the very top. Hit the function button again. Voila, it's gone. And then we use the push to talk to go back. And there we are back to our main screen. Okay, we're looking at a radio here and we're looking at all the memories that are available. And you can go through them simply by pushing the up or down arrow to review those memories or you can hold it either the up or down arrow to initiate a scan and then it will stop when you hear something and if that I don't know how quickly this could happen but if the channel goes silent then it will reinitiate the scan this radio will has the capability of holding lots and lots of memories and you can organize them into um, memory banks. So there's bank number one that I've pre-programmed and that excludes repeaters that are not in my area. So that cuts down the list a whole lot. So you can start to imagine how you could use that. We go back in here and I put some memories into bank number two. So notice I've used the arrows to sc uh, scroll through the banks and then I hit the VM button one time, and then that recalls those memories. So let's go back here to the other way here. We're going to go back to no bank. This is the incomplete list. And we'll uh, put some things into bank number three just for fun. Gonna pick these at random. So we're gonna hold down the bank button and then we're going to cycle to bank number three. And then you use the function key, hold it down. And then that will program that right into that spot. Push the talk will get us back and we can pick another one. Let's pick one here that's not you get up a lot of noise. Oh, do the same procedure. Picking bank number three. Hold down the function key for a second here. Push the talk back. And we'll do another one here. And we'll use this one. And on down to bank number three. Holding function key. Awesome. Hey, let's see what we are able to accomplish here. Initiating the bank screen. Going to number three, and we're going to hit recall. And there's those repeaters that we entered, which we can scroll either through a scan or manually one at a time. Um, let's say we have one in here that we no longer wish to have in the list. You can hold this down. And now it's uh, by holding the function button there. Now the one called Metro Sky is no longer in that particular bank. 
Okay, we're going to do just a quick review of what the steps are to kind of get you going and on the air quickly. When you open up the radio, it's going to be in VFO mode. So you're just going to be presented with a frequency, whichever that happens to be. Um, I don't recall what this radio came with by default. Uh, but there won't be anything there. There will be no information, uh, no repeaters listed, nothing like that. Um, so you can use, use Repeater Book, the app, to find that kind of thing. There, um, A R L L makes books. There's different ways you can find that information. You will find a frequency that you want from a source or just by scanning, and you can type that in here. You can use the up and down arrows to move through. You can initiate a scan in VFO to find something like that. Then you will want to put it into memory, and you can do that by holding down this button. And of course, going through the process of naming it and holding down the memory button again until it goes into memory. And then you can switch between the VFO mode and memories mode by tapping this button. And we're looking at bank three right now. And we can hold down band again to move between the other banks that are available to us. Let's go back to bank number one. We're going to recall that, and there we go. Um, I would recommend that when you're populating your banks to go from your complete list, which will be no bank. That's going to have everything. Um, I found it very, very easy to depopulate my banks unintentionally um, by trying to move them from one to the other. So you'll want to go to your main list and then populate another bank depending on you know what frequencies you want to put in there. So the next thing you need to learn is how you can add CTCSS tones to this radio. The main manual doesn't really describe how you do this so you would need to go and get the advanced manual to get instructions on how this is done. I kind of wish that Yesu would do that in the main manual because it's an obvious and necessary part of connecting to the ham community when you're using repeaters. So let's just go through what's happening right now. Um, we are not seeing any symbols above there indicating uh, any tones or any modifications uh, should we decide to uh, transmit and try and reach this repeater. I'm going to show you how this can be done because it's not very obvious. If you go back into the menu, um, you will scroll. We're going to go up. I believe it's up until we find the CTCSS. And there it is. And hit the function key again to go down to that menu. And you can see that we are able to modify the little arrow indicates which uh, item you're going to modify. And let's say we move that up to 107.2. Hit the function key to um, save that selection. Uh, in this case, I found that holding the function key is necessary to kind of get us out of the that uh, menu. But notice that nothing has changed on the main screen. So going into that particular menu item has no impact on transmitting for a saved frequency. Uh, so the advanced menu explains to you, you need to hit the function key and notice that a little F appears above the end there. And it disappears fairly quickly. So you have to do this in sequence. You can't wait too long. You push the function key, you push the F uh, P3, and that brings up the squelch that uh, will allow you to modify that memory. So you can't do it during the memory record, you have to do it afterward. And we're going to find transmit tone. And then we're going to save that by hitting the function key. And notice that a new symbol has appeared. So that tone that we selected earlier will now be applied uh, when we try to transmit to this particular frequency. You can always take that off because it's not required for this particular repeater. So we're going to hit our function key again, the P3 button, and we'll cycle through till we get to the off. 
hit the function key to save that and notice that we have now removed that that CTCSS tone all right so let's just do a quick review radio comes in VFO mode some random frequency is pre-selected for you there's no information available you can refine repeaters in our area by downloading the repeater book app the app is super nice because it has location services so it will pick out repeaters that are close to you um, and then you can of course use the band key to distribute your memories to various banks to keep everything organized and then as you need to you can initiate the transmit CT CSS tone or one of the other squelch types that you might need for a particular repeater by holding the function key briefly hitting the P and then selecting the squelch type that you need to use and that will get you on the air I hope you enjoyed this content and you will join me again next time.